Welcome to our lesson on electrolytes. You've probably seen commercials for sports energy drinks that advertise that the drink is fully loaded with electrolytes. Well, that's nice, but what are electrolytes? Well, an electrolyte is a substance that will conduct electricity when in an aqueous solution or when molten. So let's break down this definition. We have a substance that conducts electricity either when it's in an aqueous solution or when molten. Well, molten simply means when it's melted. Heat has been applied and the solid has become a liquid. Think of lava. Lava is just molten rock, rock that's been melted. But what about this other condition, in an aqueous solution? What is an aqueous solution? Or for that matter, what is a solution? Well, way back at the beginning of this course, we described the solution as one of the forms that matter takes. A solution being a mixture of substances that's uniform, or a homogeneous mixture. And remember that homogeneous means uniform. So a solution could be a mixture of solids, liquids, gases, it doesn't matter as long as it's a uniform mixture. That's a solution. In the simplest case, a solution is simply made up of a solute and a solvent. The solute is what's being dissolved, and the solvent is what's doing the dissolving, whatever the substance is that's doing the dissolving. An aqueous solution, is a solution where the solvent is simply water. That's what an aqueous solution is, something that's dissolved in water. So let's revisit our definition of electrolyte. An electrolyte is a substance that will conduct electricity when in an aqueous solution. So let's reword that a bit. It will conduct electricity when dissolved in water. So an electrolyte is a substance that will conduct electricity when dissolved in water. Now you may be wondering right now, doesn't water conduct electricity on its own? And that's actually a big misconception. Pure water, if you took purified water, it turns out that it's an extremely poor conductor of electricity. It can barely conduct any electricity on its own. Only if there's impurities or contaminants in the water do you get water that's able to conduct electricity. But pure water can't really conduct electricity. So an electrolyte is something that conducts electricity when dissolved. But what kinds of things are electrolytes? What's an example of an electrolyte? Well, all salts, so all ionic compounds, and some polar covalent compounds are electrolytes. All salts are electrolytes. But why? How does this happen? What is it about salts that allows them to conduct electricity when you dissolve them in water? To answer that, we need to look at what dissolving really means. And specifically, what happens to an ionic compound, or salt, when it's dissolved in water. Here we have an example of an ionic solid. You can tell it's made up of alternating positive and negative ions in the structure. Now if we put this ionic solid in, say, a cup of water, it's going to start dissolving is that water molecules, such as this one, are going to be able to pull off the ions of the ionic solid. So we know that the oxygen is going to be mostly negative, and we have some partial positive charges on the hydrogens. So each hydrogen of the water molecule is going to attract a negative ion from the salt, and the oxygen of a water molecule is going to be able to attract the positive ion of the ionic solid and we see something like this happen. So slowly the ions that are at the surface of the solid get broken up and dissociate or separate from the rest of the ionic solid. And we can show this process happening with an equation. Let's pretend that the salt in this example is regular table salt, NaCl, in solid form. When we put it in water, it's going to separate into its ions. You can see the water molecules are able to separate out the ions. So we get Na plus A cubed, because it's dissolved in water, plus Cl minus ions, also aqueous, because it's dissolved in water. And this separation into the ions that make up the ionic compound, this is called dissociation. So when an ionic compound, such as this one, is placed in water, it undergoes a process called dissociation, where it breaks up, or dissociates, into the ions that make it up in the first place. 
And this is what allows the electrolyte to conduct electricity. Because once this ionic compound dissolves, it now has ions floating around in the water. And ions have a charge. And as long as you have charged particles that are able to move around freely, like these ions floating around, you can conduct electricity. So that's what makes these electrolytes. Now there are many more water molecules present than just this one I drew in. And what actually happens when something dissolves, when anything dissolves, is that the water molecules surround the particle. So let's take one of these positive ions floating around. What we would actually see happen is this positive ion would end up being surrounded by water molecules. And that looks like this where you can see that the negative oxygens have all oriented themselves so that they are close to this positive ion and they've completely surrounded it. This process of a dissolved particle, in this case the positive ion, this process of a dissolved particle being surrounded by solvent molecules is called solvation. So when we say something dissolves, what we really mean is that the particles of what's being dissolved are being surrounded by solvent molecules. So what does this have to do with sports drinks having electrolytes in them anyway? Well we said an electrolyte is simply something that conducts electricity when dissolved in water. And we also said that all salts are electrolytes. So all those electrolytes are in the sports energy drinks are salts that have been added and those salts typically supply ions such as sodium, potassium, and other ions to your body because they come from the salts. That wraps up our lesson on electrolytes. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class. I'm going to continue discussing electrolytes further, including showing how some polar covalent molecules can also be electrolytes even if they don't break up into ions.